Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Ayres. Thanks very much to Tom for announcing it right. Um, but for the last 19 years, I've been a mobile DJ. Oh, I know, yeah. I've probably done some of your weddings. But basically, over the last 19 years, I've done weddings, christenings, funerals, you name it. So tonight, we're going to have a little bit of audience participation, just to kick it off, because we've had some fantastic acts so far. And there's one guy falling asleep over there, so he must be uh, pissed. Um, but moving on, after three votes, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Umpa, umpa. Charcoal, charcoal. You filthy bastards. Honestly, that is where the filthy set kicks in tonight. Because, ladies and gentlemen, for the last 15 years, I've worked on local radio as well. And when you work on the radio station, we're governed by Ofcom. So there's certain things I can't say, but you're going to hear it tonight. Do you want to hear this tonight? Yeah. It was only a few weeks ago how I had to explain to Ofcom how I wanted a hand job on the radio. You're laughing. You've experienced it, haven't you? But moving forward, we had to explain why I wanted a hand job on the radio. I basically was talking about cosmetic surgery. Many people now are going to Turkey, having turkey teeth, new air. You need some, don't you, Nathan? Yeah? Yeah? You've been using that wash and go, haven't you? You've washed it. It's fucking gone. <laughs> but moving forward, when we're talking about Ofcom, I had to explain to them why I wanted a hand job. Now, I thought I was going to get fired off quicker than Ryan Giggs at a family barbecue when I was explaining why I wanted a hand job. But then being a DJ, you also become, you right there, yeah, sorry, I thought I was fucking talking, not you. Anyway, <laughs> but being a DJ, there's three jobs to it, because you're a bit of a bouncer when people are pricks and they're just bladdered and you just end up, like, you know, escorting them out. Then you're a bit of a counsellor where there's always, like, you know, a fat bird at end at night crying, or a fat lad crying because they're single. And then there's also the entertainer bit, which I'm very poor at. But give me a cheer, ladies and gentlemen, if you're single. You definitely are. Give me a cheer, ladies and gentlemen, if you're married. Now, why is it single people always seem happier, right? And I'm just going to say this. Lying bastards, right? We've all got that one friend that don't want to go home at end at night, right? We want to get rid of them. We want to order them a taxi. But it doesn't happen. But moving forward, what I've got is a friend, right? It's my wife's friend. <laughs> Not like that. But what happens is, she comes down to our house on a Friday night. I and mean, it's what we call pre-drinks. Now, as a single person, this is casting the net out on Tinder, on all these other dating apps, right? So basically, when she goes on these apps, and this is pre-drinks, okay? So this is where it goes swipe, swipe, swipe. Dick pick swipe. <laughs> and it's true, because then this is like early doors, pre-drinks, and then when you kick in, later on about 10 o'clock, the first people that you swipe to have now started to respond back to them. Now, it's more like dick pick, dick pick, dick pick, swipe. <laughs> but what's worse is, ladies and gentlemen, right, we're all friends and we've all had a drink. She turns around to me with a phone and says, what do you think of that? Now, size of me, ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, I'm in perfect shape for a circle. I've never seen me on Willie. So I turn around and I go, I don't know, it's a funny colour. Is it zoomed in or something? <laughs> RateMyDick.com. What's all that about? <laughs> but later on in the night, it comes to that point where, just fuck off now. You've had a drink. I want you to go home. <laughs> and it's 10 o'clock. And we're turning around to her and we're saying, just go home. It's, it's that time of night now. I want to get a bit with my own wife. You go home. Now, this person, I was going to say the word then, but I'm not. But this person lives in Tameside, Greater Manchester. They order a taxi to Bolton. Not that way, is it? It's going the totally opposite way. So you think to yourself, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to a friend's house. At oh, three in the morning? So... Yeah, we've all got friends like that. But I've been married, ladies and gentlemen, for the last 11 years. Let's have a cheer for that. 
But when you're married, you have to work at it. So in our bedroom now, we've had to spice it up a little bit. We're doing a bit of role play. Yeah, 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 seriously. She pretends to be a nurse. I pretend to fancy her. That's how it is. I'm all joking. She's actually took role play up really well. She pretends to be asleep for 10 hours every night. It's f- <laughs> but when you get married, and there's every step of the journey, right? So those people who are engaged or due to get married, people then say, oh, when's the wedding? You know, and then you're married and they say that big question, that awkward question that you've got to answer. When are you having kids? Now, we've been at it 11 years, so I must be putting it in the wrong hole here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Belly button, ear, I don't know. It must be going in the wrong hole. So what would he say? Every hole's a goal. Yeah, well done. So basically, moving on to that, we then decided to go for IVF. Now, give me a bit of a cheer if you've gone through this horrible journey of going for IVF in the UK, because in the UK, you have to jump through so many holes to be successful on IVF. One of the first holes that we had to go to was me going to the STD clinic, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, I might split you here, but give me a cheer if you've ever been to an STD clinic. Nathan, you're lying again, pal. You have got genital warts written all over you. So when you go to an STD clinic, you've got to be tested, and they ask you loads of stupid questions. Have you ever fucked a budgie from Africa? Have you ever had a same-sex partner? Have you ever had multiple fucks in one night? Never been. Never been successful. But when you go to an STD clinic, ladies and gentlemen, you have to have three tests, right? You have to have a blood test, a urine test, and a urethra test. Ooh, hang on. Heard a little bit of intake of breath there for those people who've not been. So, ladies and gentlemen, they can put a man on the moon, okay, but there's no other way of doing this test. So a urethra test is where they put a piece of metal, nay, a fucking sparkler, (laughs) down your pipe. So, luckily, I passed that test, so we're all right. And it's a little bit like X Factor, you know, where they say you're through to the next route, you know, the next round. It's got to say the next room, but I'm not booper. Um, But moving on, when you sat in these... STD clinics, if you've never been, you then look up in case you recognize people or somebody recognizes you. And because I've worked on local radio for 15 years, 16 years, I am quite a recognizable figure. So when I'm there, sat in the waiting room, and there was this knobhead, right? He's called Dean. But let me tell you this. And I'm sat there, and he's the kind of person you see on aisle 10 in Morrison's, and you walk down aisle 5 just to avoid him. But what's worse is when he sits there and he goes, Daniel Ayres, what are you doing here? What are you doing in an STD clinic? I thought, honesty is the best policy. I'm here with my mate. So, ladies and gentlemen, we pass that round, and now we have to go to hospital to now provide a sample. Now, where I live in Stockport, the nearest hospital to me is Stepping Hill. So I had to do a dry run. It's probably not the right terminology, to actually, to be fair. So we went to the, the biohazard department, and I tried to find where the nearest toilets were so I could provide a sample. The quicker it's there, the better the measure. So when I'm there, the building was being refurbished. The nearest toilet to me was Sainsbury's, over the road at Stepping Hill. Now again, shout out, if feel free if you want to. Have you ever had a wank in a supermarket? <laughs> I always remember my wife saying to me, Do not get caught. (laughs) How do you explain it, honestly? (laughs) So, do not get caught. And I was in the supermarket. Now, there's three big issues with me in this toilet. The first one, it's a crapper. People are having a shit. I can't knock them for that. They're going in. They're being noisy. They're doing the business. I'm stood there. The, problem, the second problem I had was the height of the door. Now, if you've noticed, ladies and gentlemen, I'm six foot four. 
I don't know who's on next. Who's on next? Warwick Davis or something. Look at this height. But let me tell you, I'm six foot four. The door's here. So someone is going to see my cum face coming in. And gentlemen, you might be able to relate to this little bit. You've got a little specimen pot. How do I get it in? Square peg, circle hole. Right? But there's one thing you've got to take away from this tonight. There's a lot of reasons why iPhone have locked folders. And it's for those dick pics that we were talking about earlier. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to go to the toilet. If you see me in trap three, I'm not injecting. I'm clapping the acts that are on tonight. I'm Dan Ayres. You've all been amazing. Thank you. <laughs>